Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord once again? Amen. I praise the Lord that we could be here today. And we're going to study the Bible today in Luke chapter 17, if you'd head there with me. Luke 17. We are beginning a new sermon series today. And the title can be read a couple of different ways. You can read it simply, gratitude, which is my intent, or you can read it as, grr, attitude. You ever had one of those? I hope you're not in a grr attitude this morning, but I hope you're feeling a lot of gratitude. In fact, we're going to voice some thanks and some uh, heartfelt appreciation to our veterans here in just a little while, which is going to be wonderful. Thank you to Adam and the rest of you guys for putting that together. But yeah, you know, we're moving into... That period of the year that we call the holidays. You know, we have Thanksgiving coming up. We have Christmas coming up. And this is kind of your Thanksgiving sermon series in the sense that we as God's people need to have an attitude of gratitude all the time. All the time. We, we should never as Christians be caught in the grr attitude. <laughs> but instead we want to have gratitude and be grateful for not only the blessings we have in life, for what God does for us, for our, our families, our our health in so much as we have it, and our church family, and of course Jesus, just to be thankful for your salvation. See, a, a Christian has something to have gratitude toward every day, every minute of every day. For the, for the believer, if you have nothing else in your life that you can look to, and I bet if you look hard enough you'll find a bunch, but if you had nothing else to be in an attitude of gratitude about, if you have Jesus, you have everything. You have eternal life. You have forgiveness from sin. And those are precious, precious things. But I know life, real life, often gets us caught up in thinking about and being concerned with many, many other things. And this is a busy time of year for most folks. And, you know, sometimes things can have a little tension to them around Thanksgiving. You know, not, not all families get along perfectly well. Sometimes we, we have a little, a little difficulty with the, with the gratitude and may instead say, well, I'm dreading Christmas. You know, I'm, I'm about to spend a bunch of money and, you know, on and on and on. You can complain about, you know, what we're doing at the holidays or you can really plug in and, and enjoy it uh, as, as part of the things of God in your life if you can find a way to have a great amount of gratitude within. So I, I pray this morning you're living in that attitude of thankfulness and I want to show you some folks in the Bible over the next couple of weeks here who were either grateful or not grateful. Maybe some missed opportunities to show thanks and show appreciation are going to be presented to you. And we're in Luke 17 in verse 11. Now this is, this is a, a miracle of Jesus. And I love to read about the miracles of Jesus they're absolutely astounding and beyond anything we could, we could come up with. He's master of everything, of course. And in this case, he's going to cleanse ten lepers. People who had leprosy, you know, a horrible skin disease. He's going to heal them of it in this passage. But I want you to look for, as we're reading here, I want you to look for the, the gratitude, if, you, if you're able to find it present, and also note who, who didn't have much gratitude in this story, okay? So Luke 17, 11 states, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus here, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. They were healed right there on the spot. And one of them, <laughs> that's 10%, y'all. One out of these 10 who were cleansed, when he saw that he was healed, returned 
and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And this man was a Samaritan. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Other editions of the Bible there, other translations are going to say, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Either way, that's a powerful word. That wellness and that wholeness there go beyond what happened to the others who were cleansed. Let, let's have a word of prayer together before we go any further, and we're going to ask God to help us to understand these things this morning. So if you'd bow with me. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus this morning, and it's so wonderful to be in your house, Father, studying your holy word. We long to understand what is before us today. So, Father, we want to place ourselves in your hands. And we want to throw aside all concerns of what may happen later or what's going on this week and just focus for this small amount of time on what you want to say to us in your word, through your spirit. Father, I just pray you would motivate us, shake us today, help us to see areas maybe where we aren't showing gratitude but should. And we do show gratitude toward you this morning, Holy Father, for sending Jesus when you didn't have to do it, but you loved us so much that you saved us from our sins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. It's an interesting story, you know, and, and, and in Bible times, leprosy might have included a whole lot of different skin conditions. Uh, leprosy essentially uh, causes your skin to flake and fall off. Uh, it, it's, you know, in those days, of course, there was no cure for a vast amount of these conditions. And according to the, the law of Moses, if someone had some kind of thing going on with their skin, a rash, you know, just about anything, it didn't, it didn't even have to be full-out leprosy, just something wrong with you in your skin, you, you, were, you were advised to and commanded to go to the priest and, and show them what's going on with you, and they would declare you either clean or unclean. Now, if the priest said, well, you're clean, this isn't contagious, you were allowed to rejoin society. Go back to your home, go back to your job, go back to your people, and everything would be fine. But, if you were determined to be unclean, you know, because of contagion, which, you know, we've really been dealing with the last couple of years, right? Fighting this COVID stuff. And, you know, the priest would say, no, you're unclean. You cannot rejoin society until you get rid of this condition. So a person who was branded a, a leper had to leave. They had to leave home, leave work, leave family, leave society, leave everybody and go out to a leper colony. And, and, and this would be, you know, they essentially would become homeless. They'd have, they'd have to become beggars because they couldn't do anything else. So these were the outcast of the outcast. And, and there were apparently at, at least ten of them in this camp, this, this uh, uh, leper colony here that Jesus passed by. And they had heard. Word was getting around that if you had something wrong with you, and you could make your way to this Jesus of Nazareth that he's healing all kinds of diseases and conditions and he just may heal you too. So lo and behold, can you imagine being one of these lepers? I want you to put yourself in their shoes and imagine that you know I'm, I'm a leper and, and maybe I've been out there 10 years, 20 years. I've got this condition that won't go away. I haven't seen my loved ones no one has touched me in 10 years. I can't shake a hand. I can't hug anybody. Imagine this Jesus of Nazareth comes by your tent. You know, imagine he comes past you. Your reaction might be the same as, as these men here. What did they start to do? Well, it says in, in verse 12, they, they entered a certain village and there met him 10 men who were lepers. And what did they do? They stood afar off. They had to. They had to because of the disease, because of the conditions. And so these isolated men, it says, they lifted up their voices and began to cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And they had to shout because they, they couldn't get close to, to Jesus. It was illegal 
for them to even be in his orbit. And I would submit to you this morning that leprosy is, is a very strong picture of, of sin. And I'm, I'm not saying these men had leprosy because they were sinful, but I'm saying that leprosy can, can very well represent what's wrong with humanity in general. That we have been outcast from the, the presence of God and outcast from fellowship with God because of sin. That is, until we meet Jesus and He cleanses us. And I can relate to being afar off. I was so far from the things of God when Jesus found me, I didn't know which way was up anymore. I was lost as can be and just totally outside of the church and outside of, of the spiritual faith and outside of the goodness of God that there came a day that I cried this same cry. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. And if there's one thing Jesus has, it's mercy. He's got a lot of things, but mercy is so wonderful that He, he turned to them. It says He saw them. And these were people who weren't used to being seen. Jesus looked over at them and really saw them, if you take my meaning. He saw their condition. He saw that they were outcast. He saw that they were miserable. And He said to them something that may be a little confusing. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Okay, now, Jesus healed people in the Bible in a lot of different ways, didn't He? You can probably think of ten different ways right now that Jesus healed. Sometimes He would touch the person. Be healed. Sometimes He would just say it. Be healed. And it would happen. There was even a time where a blind man came to him, and you may recall, Jesus spit on the ground, made a little bit of mud, and <laughs> put that on the guy's eyes and said, go wash in that fountain. Why does Jesus heal in such radically different ways on all these different occasions? I, I truly believe it's so that people would trust Jesus, not the method. That's not magic mud. Jesus did that. Jesus can do it with a command. Jesus can do it with a touch. Jesus can do it with anything because He's the healer, right? But in this case, He did none of the above. He looked at these lepers and said, go show yourselves to the priest. So what did they do? <laughs> ah, man. He said, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And they turned and started toward the priest. And it might not have made much sense to them. They said, well, I heard this guy uh, will tell you to wash in a fountain and it'll heal you. Why is he just telling us, go? the priests have already said we're unclean. This doesn't make any sense. But what did they do? They took him at his word. That is faith. They said, whatever, whatever he tells us to do must be right because this is Jesus. This is the Savior. So they take off. They said, well, we're going to obey. And as they went, can you imagine day after day looking at yourself and watching your, your flesh fall apart suddenly to look down and you're cleansed. What joy would that have brought these ten men who were such outcasts that now all they had to go do is let the priest look them over and declare them clean and they could rejoin society. Imagine that first dinner back home with your family. Uh, imagine walking past somebody in the street and rubbing shoulders with them and not feeling like you're, you're, you're breaking the law. Imagine that first hug. Imagine what that must have been. That restoration, that's what Jesus does. When we come to Christ, you know, we're, we're, we're like the lepers. We're outcasts, we're diseased, we're wrong, and then suddenly we take Him at His Word, we have faith, and we begin to follow Him, and what happens is a cleansing occurs in your life. I've been cleansed from my sins. Jesus did it. <laughs> I know a lot of you, some of you have been making that decision recently. And that's what He's doing in you. It is, is he's, he's causing a cleansing in your life. And as they went, they were cleansed. But there's a problem. There's a big problem with this, as a matter of fact. All ten of these individuals received healing from Jesus. Jesus. How many returned to thank Him? One. Only one. You know, the, the Scripture does tell us that as we march closer to the end, as we march closer to the return of Christ, that people are going to have less and less gratitude. 
The scripture tells us people won't be thankful for anything by the time God closes the door and, and ends planet earth. That thankfulness and gratitude will, will be qualities that drain out of people that you no longer see around you. And brothers and sisters, I would submit to you that it's going on right now. So many people are not thankful for even the basic things they have. So many people are, you know, there's many of you who have chronic illnesses and things in here today, and you're, and you're thinking, well, a person who is whole really ought to be thankful for it. But isn't it always the case that a lot of times you're not thankful for something until you're missing it, right? You get thankful for your health when suddenly you have a health problem, right? You get thankful for air conditioning when it goes out in the summertime. Man, we had some summers in Oklahoma. We had one that it got 114 degrees. You get up and put the air conditioner on 60, and by the afternoon, it's 80 in the house, you know? And, and when the air conditioning goes out, don't you always think, boy, or how about when you get a stuffy nose? You think, I, I wasn't thankful all the times I could breathe through my nose, but I am today because <laughs> I can't breathe, and I need that back in my life. Yeah, a lot of times our blessings go by unnoticed. And we really owe thanks to God for our blessings, don't we? You know, we're, we're going to thank our veterans here in a little while, rightly so, for what they have done in service to our country. That's a wonderful and, and patriotic thing to do and a godly thing to do too because I think a lot of people out there no longer appreciate and are thankful for and have gratitude towards uh, all that has gone on before that has, that has put us in a position to have the, the freedom that we have we take it utterly for granted that this, you know, this very day in, in China, somebody's going to meet and have a Bible in their hand and get arrested for it. There's nobody coming in here with machine guns and handcuffs dragging us away this morning for worshiping God. Be thankful for it, church. How can you be thankful for it? By being here when the doors are open. Celebrate the freedoms and the victories and the good things that you have because all of those things are blessings from God. The book of James tells us, does it not, that every good and perfect gift comes to us from the Father of lights above. Every good and perfect gift. I've got some good gifts in my life. I've got some perfect gifts too. My salvation is perfect. And I need to be thankful every day that I could even be a believer after the way I lived for so long. That God would even take me in and have an interest in me boggles my mind every day, church. And I want to stay in that mindset so that I'm always thankful. He's given me some perfect gifts. My wife. My children. I had to, y'all. Come on. <laughs> no, seriously. Family. I mean, and so many people aren't even thankful for their family these days. As you and I are headed towards Thanksgiving, let's not give mere lip service. Uh, oh yeah, well, let's be thankful and all, but let's really and humbly be deeply thankful for the good things in our life and enjoy those now while they're present. Amen? That's, that's the Christian way. Not complaint, not bitterness, not glass half full kind of thinking. That's the grr attitude, right? We Christians need to be deeply thankful for all the good things that we have. And so these ten lepers cleansed and only one went back. Why? I've, I've tried to understand the motivation and I think I've got it. I think I do. I, th I think these nine did not come back and thank Jesus because they were so excited about the good things that were going to happen in the future. They were so overjoyed at getting their rights back and rejoining society that they rushed to that. And they rushed the wrong direction. They said, we're, you know, Jesus told them, go show yourselves to the priest. And, you know, one came back, and I'm sure there was plenty of time to see the priest later after he gave thanks, right? But those nine, they said, oh, finally, what we've been wanting, it's here. Let's go. Let's run. Let's go to the priest. I'm going home. I'm going to have supper tonight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they totally forgot Jesus. That's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame. But the one who came back, I'm thankful for him. Because he shows us this morning how we should approach our thankfulness for our blessings. What does he do? He comes back to Jesus 
And he fell on his face at the feet of Jesus and praised and glorified God for the good thing that was done for him. And, and, and there's a difference, isn't there? there? There's a big difference between these nine who, who selfishly rushed out and, and were, were after stuff instead of thankfulness toward Jesus. And I, I can relate. There have been times when I've got caught up in things and, and failed to be thankful for what I had instead. And, and this man was a Samaritan. Many of you probably know that in Bible times, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. They, they, the Samaritans were considered the dogs, is what they called them. They, I mean, they had, a, they had a big time racial struggle against these Samaritans. And this Samaritan runs back and falls at the feet of a Jew. This would have not made any sense to you had you been there watching it. But in his heart, it made perfect sense. He said, I must go thank Jesus. I'm going to go worship him. I'm going to go love him. I'm going to go demonstrate that I'm a thankful person. Why? Because he deserves it. Because he deserves it. A lot of times children aren't very thankful for what we do for them, right? You know, you ever, you ever go all out and buy that huge Christmas gift or whatever and they play with the box instead? <laughs> Empty wrapping paper tubes. Best sword in history, right? Or lightsaber or whatever you want it to be. And, then, or, and, and it just ends up thrown in the closet or whatever and you think, well, maybe someday they'll come to maturity and they'll have kids of their own and they'll, they'll comprehend that they should have been a little more thankful for what mom and dad sacrificed to give them that. But they may not understand that at that young age. But I, I'm looking out here and I see a lot of adults. We do need to understand that, don't we? We do need to understand thankfulness and gratitude and we do need to thank Jesus. And I hope that is your attitude this morning. This guy was a Samaritan. He had no business being there at the feet of Jesus, and yet he, he wasn't going to be stopped. I, I, I would dare say you couldn't have stopped those nine guys from running to the priest. You couldn't have stopped this guy from running to Jesus. He said, I'm going to get there no matter what, and I'm going to worship him. And, and Jesus' response is, is somewhat heartbreaking to me. We're not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And I don't think Jesus meant that negatively. He just, he's just stating a fact that this was unusual. And in verse 19, Jesus says something of, of profound importance. I want you to look at it with me. He said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Or your faith has made you well. Well, weren't the other guys made well and whole by faith too? It, it seems here, you might be thinking, well, preacher, it seems here to me that all ten received the miracle, so what's the big deal? Actually, this man received more. There's a different word being used here for cleansed versus well and whole. They're different. The nine were cleansed, meaning their skin condition went away. And that was the extent of their blessing. The outside of them got fixed. Their flesh got healed. They had a cleansing from Jesus. But this man received so much more. In the Greek that the New Testament is originally written in, this word is sozo. That word that's, that your faith has made you whole or well. And it means saved. These guys got cleansed. This guy got saved. <laughs> See, some people are so thankful for what God can do for them that they fail to give recognition to God being simply who He is. But being on your face before the Son of God, that's what makes you saved. This guy got so much more. He got cleansed. He got delivered. He got redeemed. He got the inside of him washed and not just cleaned up on the outside. And that's the way you want to be, brothers and sisters. I know some of you are dealing with some pretty profound, painful, physical things. But if God never takes that from you, rejoice. Rejoice in the salvation that has cleansed you within. you got something to be thankful for each and every day. Praise God. That's pretty deep stuff, isn't it? When I began to read that, my, my, my heart rejoiced. I said, God, your word is so good. 
It, it helps us make sense of things in ways that we didn't see before. So, so the teaching then is to have, you know, which one do you want? Do you want to be merely cleansed or do you want to be whole? Because that word whole means to be fixed, to be completed. And I've preached to you before that all of us, until we receive Jesus, have a, have a God-shaped hole within. Do, do you want that longing to finally be plugged and filled, or, or are you just coming to God asking Him for stuff? Because people are good about begging God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. How often, how, how fewer times do you think people actually are thankful for what God has done for them? So I'd invite you to be very thankful today. And here's something I'm thankful for. Last Sunday, it was a great day in the house of the Lord, just like today, and last Sunday afternoon, I, I, I get a message from, from a young man who was here in church, and he said, uh, Pastor, I, I, I know God was dealing with me this morning, and, and I missed it. What do I need to do to be saved? I said, call me right now. I'm sitting in Parkade Plaza parking lot waiting on Carrie. <laughs> and I'm leading this man to Jesus over the phone. I said, God will hear us through the phone. Don't worry about it. And we'll let the church know next week. Carrie came about that time and opened the car door and realized what was going on. And she started praying too. And we've, we've rejoiced all week long. And I want to present to you the, the newest Christian in the house. Jake, would you come join me right here for a second? This man calls me and says, I need Jesus. Amen. I know it's a nervous thing to get up here, but you've got to stand for God in front of people, I'm you know. Jacob. That's Jake. <laughs> and, and so this, this household is undergoing a, a revolution in Christ. And, uh, you know, we went to the men's shoot yesterday, and this guy called me brother about 47 times. I think he got the real deal. God bless you, my friend. This will be another baptism that we have coming up. So we praise God, and I'm grateful for you. It. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. That's what, why not get saved and baptized together? Amen. Amen. So we're having fun with what God is doing here for sure, and, and I want you to know that if, that if you're the next, that if God is dealing with you and you want to receive Jesus, it, it, it's so easy and God has made it easy so that we can, we can get a hold of it real easily. The Scripture says if you believe in Jesus, that He's who He says He is, and He died and rose again for your sins, that then you just need to confess with your mouth. And it's a simple prayer. When we prayed on the phone, I just had Jake pray something like this. Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I need to be saved. Please come into my life and save my soul. And thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. And, and, and that's really all it takes. I know some of you may feel like I'm trying to, to, to sell you something and there's got to be more to it. No. That's just the mercy of Jesus that he sees your, your leprosy, so to speak, your sin, and he wants to cleanse you, but he also wants to make you fully whole. So in just a minute, we're going to close with a song, and as we do, if you want to make that same step that Liz and Jake have made in our midst in the last few weeks, uh, you come and find me in just a minute. So, Brother Isaiah, let's come and close this service with an attitude of thankfulness and of worship because He is worthy, and Jesus alone is worthy. What is our number, brother? It is 435. Oh, that's a good one. Most of you know just as I am, and that's how God wants you to come, is just as you are. 435 in your hymnal, if you'd like to turn there with us. Let's have a word of prayer just now as you hold that place. Join me. Father, we rejoice. We give you honor and praise for our own salvation, but also for new life in Liz, new life in Jake. The way we see you working in our midst, Father, we glorify you this morning. Jesus, you are so perfect and so good. You are so merciful unto us. Lord, I want to pray for anybody who's here today who says, Pastor, I need to make that step. I pray in just a minute, Lord, that you'll just put wings on their feet and bring them up here that they may experience the new life and the resurrection that you have paid to give us. Holy Spirit, have your own way in this place. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. 435 as we sing. The invitation is open at any time you come in Jesus' name. Friends,
we got four verses, we'll do one, two, five, and six. 